I yield at this time to the uh, ranking member on the Resources Committee, the senior Republican uh, from Alaska, Mr. Young, such time as he may consume. Gentleman I, is recognized. I thank the gentleman for yielding and asking them to provide and extend. So ordered. Here we go again. Another nail in the coffin of energy independence. Another nail. In fact, adding to the unemployment rate. If this bill was to become law, mines will be shut down. They will be shut down. And what bothers me the most is we had a bipartisan bill, actually was passed in 206, 206 I believe, or 207, that uh, improved the 1977 Mine Safety Health Act was supported by everybody. That side and this side, the administration. And we have not given the time, that's less than a year and a half, given the time, for the operators of these mines to even reach that requirement that we said was the right thing to do. Now, as always amazing me, I don't think there's much coal mining in Vallejo or in the Bay Area or Point Reyes. And I do respect the gentleman from West Virginia because he does have mining. And I've heard from his operators in that area that there's a very difficult th thought process going forth with this bill. Can they operate? Because in this bill, they stopped the ability for Belt Air, which in fact was put in for safety purposes, supported by the people who understand this, for diluting methane and dust levels, and this bill prohibits that. How is that improving the life of our miners? It is not. And more than that, I want to remind people, as bad as it may appear and as is very much you know, heart-wrenching when there is a death in a mine, we still have the safest mining industry in the world. China lost 6,000 people that we know of last year in their coal mines, building one new coal-fired plant a, a, a week. And here we are with this bill, if it was to become law, again adding to another nail in our coffin for energy independence. Coal is a solution to this terrible dependence that we have on foreign oil. I was a little disappointed today when I saw the president ask the OPEC countries to produce more oil so we can lower the price. Our fault in this country is we're not producing oil on our lands, which we have, and we're not producing the coal which we have an abundance of. And I believe, when I'm saying this under the guise of helping the miner out, we're jeopardizing their jobs, jeopardizing the economy of this country, and driving us further into the depression which may occur. If that does happen, I want to compliment that side of the aisle, if that does happen because you haven't addressed the issue of energy, and I'm a little bit disappointed. I watched all the presidential debates, not even on my side, let alone that side. Has anybody talked about solving the energy problem in this country? We must address that issue because our economy is based on energy that can move product. Every ship is fossilly driven. Every train is fossilly driven. Every truck is fossilly driven. Every car. Everything you eat and everything you consume is delivered to you by fossil fuels. Now, we can improve nuclear power to give us fixed power. And we can burn coal. And we can use uh, solar. And we can use hydro. We can do all these things, but there's fixed power. And we as a nation and this Congress has not got to the point where we understand if we don't do something, we keep sending the dollars abroad, there's a great possibility that this whole economy we have will implode. I'm saying wake up, Mr. and Mrs. America. Start asking your members of Congress, let's do something about energy. You can't conserve yourself into a prosperity position. You've got to have new energy, new production. Yes, drilling. Offshore of California, shame on you. Offshore in Florida, shame on Florida. Offshore in Alaska, shame on Alaska. We must start developing our fossil fuels in the, in the Rocky Mountains. We must start to have the Rhone Plateau, which you took off the table, the Rhone Plateau, have that developed. We have to start doing what is necessary to make sure we're no longer dependent on those foreign countries who are not our friends. So I urge you, no on this bill, because there's another nail in the coffin that creates this country more, more weaknesses and not the ability to provide for the future generation. I yield back. Gentleman from I yield myself 30 seconds. The gentleman from Alaska is quite correct. It's a pathetic sight to see the President of the United States begging a Saudi prince 
to release more oil eight years after that president's been in office, several energy bills passed by the, by the Republican Congress, and the president's left going hat in hand begging the Saudi prince for more oil. It just shows the opportunity cost of this administration, of that Republican Congress, and the pathetic po energy policy uh, that, that we were left with. The new energy bill, however, reverses that trend. I'm very proud to be part of it. With that, I yield uh, uh, two minutes to Mr. I don't have – you've got a lot of time on your side. You, you, you want to let him yield seconds. Up. I'd be happy, Mr. His Chairman. Response, I love yield his response. the gentleman 30 seconds to respond. It, it, and I, I, I want to make sure the House is in order now because – this is a man of <laughs> the gentleman from Alaska is <laughs> great vocal talent. My good friend in California, he is my good friend. You have to recognize that we have not done anything. When you were in the majority, you did nothing. You, in fact, had President Clinton veto the opening of uh, new oil discoveries in Alaska. Yes, it's true. Ten years ago. No, no, ten years, years, years ago, ago. Again, everybody tells me because we can do it at a later date. And what we're doing is nothing. <laughs> I ask each one of you in this no, room to sit here was today. No, you I'm asking you, are we going to sit until this whole country comes to a collapse because we're not addressing the energy policy? The energy bill we Time passed here produced no Alaska energy at all. Expired.